Good day to everybody. It is July 20th, and today we are looking at Proverbs chapters 22 and 23, two chapters today instead of our usual three. So let's get right into it. Proverbs 22, 1 through 6 concludes a collection of Proverbs that began in 10, 1. Um, and again, like previous Proverbs, uh, previous sections, they uh, there's really no structure, no logical structure to the Proverbs. Uh, but there is a continued emphasis on wealth uh, and business. Uh, we've got uh, a lot of terms here that in one form or another signify wealth, rich, riches, prosperity. Uh, so we keep that in mind throughout uh, these, these sections. Chapter 22, six, train children in the right way. Uh, like other Proverbs, this is a statement of a general truth, not an absolute guarantee uh, or sweeping judgment of parents. Early and consistent training has lasting effects upon a child for which parents are responsible. Children, however, ultimately are responsible for their own decisions in life. 22.8, rod of anger. Uh, here we have probably a reference to that of a cruel tyrant who rules uh, unjustly and in anger. Now, starting in 2217, we have another section here that uh, goes through the uh, end of 24. And these are the sayings of the sages, uh, wise, uh, wise proverbs from various sages. And we do think that um, uh, through 2412 here, we have a, a parallel to an ancient Egyptian pro proverbial text, I should call it, called the Amene, Amenemope uh, or Amenemope. And uh, the ancient Hebrews would have been familiar with this text. And so there are certainly parallels. And it may be that uh, some of these proverbs are borrowed from these, this Egyptian text. Um, proverbs were general wisdom. So they could have been uh, taken from other cultures and no doubt perhaps some other cultures took some of uh, the proverbs unique to Israel and appropriated them as well. So, uh, so we get into this section 2217 through 2422 and it addresses especially young men from the upper class who are near the beginning of their careers on how to succeed or advance in their professions. The opening verses uh, define such success as a pleasant life, living out trust in the Lord and reliability and competence in one's work. Uh, to these ends, the sages offer cautions regarding common missteps uh, taken to advance one's career, uh, such as taking advantage of the powerless, risky financial practices, an unhealthy ambition for wealth, and losing self-control. Uh, and of course, there are admonitions toward best practices for achievement, skill in one's work, listening to wise counsel, and faithful service to the Lord and King. 2220, so here we have a, a strange phrase, 30 sayings, and we don't really know too much about this Hebrew phraseology other than it could also come from this Egyptian proverbial text and doesn't quite work in translation into the Hebrew. So it's hard to say exactly what's being said here. Um, but if we move on to 2221, we get the phrase to those who sent you. Uh, common language uh, for a messenger who must convey, convey his master's message bring back an accurate reply and perhaps even represent his master in any negoti negotiation. So this is wisdom to those who have been sent. Um, 2222, the phrase at the gate, the, the gate is of the town, is the place for public business and for legal trials. 2228, do not remove the ancient landmark. Ancient landmarks consisted of a pillar or stone set out to mark property lines. To remove or move such a stone would be to encroach on and claim someone else's property, most likely individuals who are poor and therefore are unable to defend their rights. Um, 
and uh, we are reminded that God is the protector of those who are vulnerable. 23.7, like a hair in the throat. Now, this is an interesting phrase. It is somewhat uncertain, somewhat ambiguous, but it may refer to something, the hair in the throat that irritates one that makes one throw up, makes one vomit. And what we have here, it seems, uh, this section is uh, warning against accepting an invitation uh, from um, someone who begrudgingly offers it or is obligated to offer it or is a two-faced host. 2320, 2320, um, wine bibbers, drinkers, drunkards, uh, those who drink to excess is what the word wine bibber means. Uh, along with the gluttonous eaters of meat, these two groups symbolize extravagance and self-centered lifestyles. Uh, 23, 29 through 35 uh, is a, uh, an extended uh, kind of lampoon on excessive drinking. Who has woe? Uh, and an, an initial riddle of six questions lead to an answer, uh, a warning, and then a vivid description of the bite of drunkenness. The text here includes a full range of consequences for drunkenness, emotional, relational, mental, and physical, such as red eyes and a sensation of being seasick. Uh, injuries without awareness or memory and addiction. So there is warning about excessive use of alcohol perhaps what Proverbs in some ways wants to teach us, and as uh, many have wanted to teach throughout the wisdom of the ages, all things in moderation. Okay, friends, let's pray. Gracious God, we thank you again for another day, for another opportunity to be in your service, and we gratefully receive the gifts you have for us in this day. May we use them as good stewards in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, see you tomorrow.